Why hello again lads and lasses. This video is going specifically out to Drew since he seems to have at least a mild interest in this game. It's basically going to go over all the crucial elements of Sea of Thieves and how to do these things. These things are going to include the three C's of Sea of Thieves. It's controls, currency, and combat. So, without further ado, controls are rather similar to any other first person game. Right stick looks around, left stick moves you, up, down, all around. Very typical. There's a variety of NPCs or non-player characters you can talk to in game. That's always done with the Y button. Most of these people will have some sort of stock you can buy from. And I will get into that later. To open a barrel or other container, it's X. To take things out in mass, you can press A and it will take everything from a certain stack that you can carry. Or to take out an item individually, you can press Y. Just like that. You can also see that in the bottom left corner of your screen. It's very simple to follow. And B obviously exits the menu. With certain resources, you can only hold up to a certain amount. You can only hold five planks at a time, ten cannonballs at a time, and five pieces of food at a time. Once you're safely outside, A is the safest, easiest way to jump, or you could just do a fall, which, you know, it's gravity. Left stick is sprint. Now, for wielding your weapons, Y will bring out any of your weapons. Just like any other shooter, if you have a gun equipped, left trigger will zoom it in, right trigger fires, and it will automatically reload as all weapons are single shot weapons. Your sword, left trigger will block. You move more slowly while blocking, but all frontal damage from other swords is negated entirely. Right trigger will swing, holding right trigger, do a heavy attack, which if you miss will leave you vulnerable for a little bit, but if you connect with them, you will do 50% of a player's health damage to them. Mm -hmm. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Now for currency, as you may have seen before. In the top right corner of your screen, there are three types of currency. The one all the way on the left is called Ancient Coins, it is this game's version of microtransactions. You pay for those, you can buy certain cosmetics or emotes or pets or other nonsense. The middle currency there with the little blue, uh, was that hexagon? That is called the bloons, which, you know, it's a pirate currency. Those you get from special missions, you can get from this fella, and just from completing commendations, which I will also show later. The final currency on the right is gold, which you just use to buy cosmetics, voyages, and that's pretty much it. There's not too much to do with any of the currencies, as you don't really upgrade weapons to be better than other people, you just get skins that you like. So it's pretty simple there. Now, going back to talking to Stitcher Jim, or any Jim. other NPC, some of them will give you voyages you can complete. Like here, you can see these are free as they cost zero doubloons apiece. And I will show you about voyages in a little bit. Also, there's a variety of NPCs that offer you cosmetics, such as these. I don't really care for most of them, but you can also see these cost gold. It uses that little gold symbol. The next tab, which you can filter through with RB as it shows at the top left there, these then cost doubloons to do. So the currency and purchasing of this game is extremely simple. Bring back now, some goodies next up, here, we have cosmetics. You may have seen at the beginning. You can dress your pirate up however you wish. Normally you start off with just your underwear and nothing really. But the game starts you off with enough gold where you can at least get a decent set of clothes so you don't look like a bum the entire time. The other part of cosmetics is your ship. I'll get down there and show you momentarily. Mm -hmm. 
your ship whenever you start is very basic and plain. It's just brown and looks like a boring old ship. Once you have cosmetics, this little cosmetic chest here, it will always be next to the ship lady whom you can buy cosmetics from. But if you open this up, it gives you a list of all the cosmetics you own and different things you can change, such as the figurehead on the front of your ship, the color of your hull, the color and type of your sails, your wheel can be changed, your cannon can be changed, and your cap stand to raise and lower your anchor can be changed. And there you go. It does it basically instantly. Then your ship doesn't look like a potato. You can actually have a nice looking ship. Now on your ship, you also have containers. These containers, however, unlike other barrels, are specific. So they wood barrel, food barrel, and up top you saw a cannonball barrel. You can only put specific things in these barrels, like grubs are a type of food, not that I would recommend eating them, but you can only move food into other food barrels down here. Here, wood is the only thing that's stored, see I cannot place the cannonballs, and up top every ship has at least two cannonball barrels that you can store cannonballs in. Now for the rest of your ship, you have your map table in the back, you have your voyage table, you have your mast, you can climb all the way up. This is useful for getting a better view of your surroundings, and also to set out a flag to distinguish your ship from other ships. Pointless bell, if you so wish. Once you throw up a flag, you then be able to see the wind direction. You can see these lines anyway. But the game will occasionally glitch where these wind lines do not appear, so your flag is very useful to tell which direction the wind is heading in. So, I will show you how to set down a voyage. It's very obvious on screen, so propose, hit X. Whatever voyages you have available are listed here. You press A to propose it, and you, even if you're by yourself, you have to press X to vote on it. Then bring up these little black bars the bottom will show you what players are involved in the voyage and the top will show you the name of the voyage now this may be a little confusing since I kind of ran through that pretty quickly but I will slow it down for you here when you have a voyage it doesn't look like anything sp special it just says quest received you have all that fancy stuff you'll have to hold the left bumper on your controller to bring up a radial wheel and then use your right stick to select the different slots here. Since this voyage I selected only has one, then bring up the map, press right trigger to pull the map up in front of your face. It's fairly simple. And any maps that depict islands, you will get used to it, but you then have to go to the map table and find out what island it is. I just happen to know that it is this fort here. I'll zoom in all the way so you can see. See the shape of that, and then the shape of that. That shows you what island you need to go to. And the map, as you can see the compass in the bottom right corner is very easy, it's north, south, east, and west. Nothing too difficult. That is basically that. Ah, something else I forgot, to equip these things for use. Not that you'll ever need to hold cannonballs. But if you hold the right bumper on your controller, it brings up a different radio wheel. Top is food, top right is cannonballs, right is planks. You also have a variety of other tools, telescope, for obvious reasons. You also press right trigger to zoom in on this. You don't hold left trigger, even though you would probably assume it would be left trigger to aim, but to use it, you just hold right trigger. The shovel is useful when you're going to dig up different types of treasure that's buried, such as the ones on this voyage here. All these X's will have to find them and use the shovel to pick them up with right trigger. Lantern, press left trigger to hold it up, right trigger puts it out, turns it back on. The bucket. Bucket is useful for when your ship takes damage. Your ship will begin to fill with water, so you'll have to scoop it up and throw it right on out, bailing out your ship give you an example here. Water is now partially filled the lower portion of my deck. Just scoop anywhere, pick up the water, and you chuck it. Putting you at less danger of sinking. 
The compass is, well, it's self-explanatory. You can buy different skins for the compasses. I have this cool red fiery compass. And you can just basically use it as you would any compass. It shows you what direction you're facing. There's nothing exciting there. If you hold right bumper like this, you'll see X brings up more. More gives you a variety of other things. The speaking trumpet on the top lets you talk to other players if you're not in a party. The concerta, I believe it's called. It's just an accordion. Tankard lets you drink and get drunk. Drum, self-explanatory. Fishing rod lets you fish. I'll get into that later. Hurdy-gurdy, also another instrument. The pocket watch. Some voyages will give you a specific time and day, and this pocket watch will always show you the current time and the current date. Months don't matter, it's just the days on the voyages. And lastly, the banjo for some fine music. Just hold right trigger and it'll play five different songs that appear in random order. Easy peasy. And throwables. Had I found any firebombs? Throwables? at the moment only include the firebombs. So if you're carrying some of those, you would press, hold right bumper, press Y, and they would be in the top right there. You can only carry five of those. Those are useful for obviously setting people and ships on fire for, you know, the expected effect. Let's see if I can find any firebombs. All right, does not look like it. So next we'll move on to the controls of the ship. Every ship when it starts is sitting at the dock anchored. So you have to press X to grab hold of one of the handles of the capstan and you can just push forward. You don't have to hold X. And this will let you raise your anchor. It goes faster if another person is holding the other side of the anchor arm there. That way you can basically go twice as fast. The wheel. As you would expect, any wheel will turn the ship. Ship turns are sharper the more your sails are up. As you notice, I'm not moving because my sails are not down. There's a sail length cleat and a sail angle pulley. The length adjusts how fast you're moving. And the cleat, uh, sorry, the pulley will adjust your sails. If you turn them into the wind, Obviously, you'll proceed to go much faster. Your ship will not stay straight. No matter how straight you keep the wheel like this, it will move because the water physics in this game will move the ship for you. Now, if you have the wind against you, your ship will still move. It will just be far slower. You will never not be moving if your sails are down. Just to give you a quick example of the turn, it takes longer to turn yourself when your sails are all the way down. It's just like driving a car in any game. You turn worse the faster you're going. You hear that little thump? That means that is the end of the turn and the wheel will not turn any further in the direction you were just turning. Once you straighten out your wheel, You'll also notice that sound effect and the look will show you when your ship is moving faster, when it's caught moving. In the middle, you hear a different thump. Kind of like that, it's like a creaking. That means your ship is going as straight as it can for the time being. And you just have to keep constantly monitoring where your ship is going. Now, since I showed you before on the map, we have to head north to find this place to dig up these treasures. On the map here, it shows the path you're currently taking. You can also see where the islands, all the islands are on the map. Left trigger zooms out, right trigger zooms in. It's fairly simple. Combat. Since I remember the other day, you asked me about combat in this game. More specifically, bullets. You asked if bullets are hard to find. They are not. 
because you can see the little counter in the bottom right corner it says you have five shots for every weapon. Once you're out, you can't reload, but come down here and press X. You'll be very easily able to reload your weapon. There are four types of weapons. There's the flintlock pistol, your sword. There's also the blunderbuss, which is essentially a shotgun and functions as you would expect. And a sniper rifle called the Eye of Reach. Eye of Reach does the most damage per hit. The pistol, well, at 80 damage, does the most damage per hit. The pistol does 50 damage per hit. The blunderbuss can do up to 100 damage if you hit all the pellets from the shotgun. So you have to be very close, but you can one-tap people. The Blunderbuss has, over the other weapons, a knockback ability, which will obviously knock enemies away from your position. Now, not that there's anything at this small island we're approaching, but I can show you two methods to stop at an island. Both very similar, but one is more effective. You could, much like driving a car, just raise your sails completely to basically coast to a stop. And since I know you own a boat crew, you will understand boats do not stop on a dime. Neither will these ships. So you can casually coast up to an island and eventually you'll come to a halt. At some point. Or, a second option is lower the anchor by holding X. This will stop your ship dead, wherever it is. If you're going fast, you will lurch forward a little more, but your ship will halt. I always recommend when you're stopping at an island to raise your anchor again, as if someone comes upon you and begins firing at your ship. All you have to do then is simply drop your sails and you're ready to go. You don't have to go through the whole winding up the anchor animation because you can be knocked off your anchor by another player, by their cannonballs, by a variety of units. And lastly, even though controls took up a huge portion of this video, moving on to the final scene, which is combat. Combat can involve a variety of situations. It also all depends on how you play. You could either end up fighting mostly against AI skeleton, which are fairly easy to beat. You can end up fighting against other players, such as that ship over there. Or, in some cases, you'll end up fighting against a Megalodon or a Kraken. Those fights take place from your ship strictly, and only out in deeper waters. So, I highly doubt we're going to find a Megalodon or Kraken. I'm also hoping we don't get involved in a player versus player battle because I will probably lose given that I am playing by myself. So, I'm hopefully going to be able to show you some PvE fighting against skeletons. Perhaps that will even allow me to take some damage to show you how to repair your ship should you take fire. That sound you hear right there means that the fortress I am approaching, which is this map where I have to go find stuff, is currently active, indicated by the giant red skull there. Most forts in the game world are inactive at one point or another. There is only ever one active fort at a time, and an active fort basically means it is manned by skeletons, and they man those towers there and cannons on the beach to fire at your ship. The only reason one would go here, aside from a voyage leading them to a fort, would be if you defeat all 13 waves of a fort, you'll get some really good loot. As you probably saw, that skeleton tower fired a cannon. It didn't hit. I'm hoping this one does not hit either. 
That was mighty close. That one's probably gonna work. Oh, big ol' miss as well. That one. I'll show you in a moment once I park. Just how to deal with damage like that. Or always raise your anchor. That way, if someone else comes upon you and you need to get away quickly, you can. Now, for the hole here. You can see where the cannonball actually hit. That will usually correspond to a hole below deck somewhere. Now, take out a piece of wood. See how it says repair a hole? So repair a hole. Just hold right trigger until that little circle fills. You've got a patched hole. Some holes are bigger, such as that one, that take a longer amount of time to patch. Smaller ones take maybe two seconds. Well, that one took four. So all you do is scoop the water out like I showed you, and your ship is safe again. Had I just left my ship with that hole in it, eventually I would have sunk. When your ship sinks, if you die, you have to respawn back at your ship, which spawns somewhere randomly in the water. Now on to combat. You can hear skeletons growling behind me, or above me. There's different grades of skeletons. All the plain white skeletons, very easy to beat because they all have the lowest health. You can do an easy three swing with your sword, or you can do the charge attack. Pistol is always an option. However, a very valuable piece of equipment here would be the gunpowder keg. Which, if you don't do like I just did, you can actually light it and drop it. Gunpowder kegs are very, very vulnerable. As a skeleton simply swiped at that one, and it exploded, killing me and all the skeletons at the same time. They could be hit with your sword, they could be hit with another explosion, a pistol shot. Whatever it may be, gunpowder barrels explode very, very easily. Every time you die, you end up on the Ferry of the Damned. This is very much like the ship crossing the river Styx to the underworld and old Greek mythology, except here, you can come back through this portal and you will spawn back on your ship. So if my ship was sunk, I would not be able to spawn right back here to continue this fight. Now for the void. All you have to do is notice the islands as they appear. Which is, this one has this big rock you can see to the right side X mark. Put your shovel in the dirt and see what you get. Hopefully it's not face full of skeletons such as this. They will attempt to eat you to death. So much. Ah, now you can see how they're actually taking some damage that isn't lethal. In the bottom left corner of your screen, you can see a green bar slowly dribbling down from being eaten to death. That is your health. When your health gets low, take out a piece of food and eat it. The bar comes back. Blocking would have been effective for me right there, but I'm pretty bad. You only fold five pieces of food, so be careful. See? Leaving a keg after a couple seconds will explode. Should have caused a good amount of damage to this guy. Oh dear. Oh 
dangerous hit markers every time you get a hit from an enemy. My goodness. show you a little more casually what fighting is all about, but we're probably going to die again, because I am now out of it. Ah, swimming. I gotta tell you that's swimming. You have to go underwater, you have about 45 seconds until you begin to drown and take damage, but you will not die instantly. That's something you never really have to worry about. There are different grades of food, with banana being the lowest, but as you play, if you play, you'll come to notice which ones are better, which ones are worse. Oh. Sometimes if you get into a sort of little buggy area where your character can't get out, you will just be teleported back to your ship, as opposed to you being stuck there for an eternity. And that is pretty much the basics of the game. I didn't really go over ship combat too much, because I did not get into an actual fight. But other than that, that's basically all you need to know for the game. If you are interested, just be sure to let me know, and maybe we can set sail sometime. I always have a dedicated first mate with me, except for today, because he's out. But, typically, it'll be the two of us on a small ship, but if we were to have a third, I could show you the larger ships in the game. So, this has been Doodleman149, and as usual, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a nice day. I will see you later. Hey everybody, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. If you've stuck around this long to see this, then you must have liked something in the video. So if you want, show your support by dropping me a like, maybe even hitting that subscribe button, and hitting that notification bell so you know next time I upload something. And I hope you're having a pleasant day, and remember you are important to someone. If not me, it's someone else in your life. So, this has been Doodleman149, and I will see you later.